Boeing 747 has just left the U.S. airspace and is continuing its flight west of Alaska towards Japan. Suddenly, the aircraft entered a 40-degree left bank. The crew starts the fight to regain control of the jumbo jet. Finally, they decide to divert to Anchorage. However, they can't declare an emergency as the aircraft is in a communication dead zone. This is the story of Northwest Flight 85 and how well-trained pilots saved 404 lives from certain death. October 9, 2002 was another day in the aviation industry. It was the beginning of autumn, but airports were still busy. At around 2 p.m. local time, 386 passengers and 18 crew members boarded the Boeing 747-400 at Detroit Metropolitan Airport. Northwest Flight 85 was a scheduled flight to Tokyo Narita. The aircraft was 14 years old at the time of the accident, and it was not an ordinary jumbo jet, but we will talk about it later. At 2.30 p.m., the flight left the Northwest hub for a long 13-hour journey. The aircraft was flown by Senior Captain John Hansen, Junior Captain Frank Gieb, and two first officers, Mike Fagan and David Smith. The number of pilots was determined by the length of the flight and Northwest policies. The beginning of the flight was uneventful, Passengers had received their meals and many of them fell asleep. After four hours, the flight left the U.S. airspace over Alaska. Two hours later, it was flying over the Bering Sea in the so-called communication dead zone, which means that it was out of any radar's range and the crew wasn't also able to communicate with air traffic control over the radio. Flights follow the previously given flight paths and contact the ATC via satellite. Just after the senior captain and one of the first officers left the cockpit for rest, the aircraft abruptly entered a 30 to 40 degree left bank. Guyb initially believed that an engine failure had occurred. He disengaged the autopilot and tried to stabilize the aircraft by hand. After a short while, senior captain Hansen re-entered the cockpit and continued to fly the aircraft by hand with the help of the first officer. In the meanwhile, Guyb tried to declare an emergency. The pilots decided to divert to Anchorage, which was around two hours away at the moment. As the aircraft was in the communication dead zone, the only possibility was to contact with the nearby Northwest Flight 19, which was able to contact with the ATC. The pilots suspected that the plane suffered from a lower rudder hardover, as due to its size, Boeing 747 has two rudders lower and upper. One of them had deflected to the left and was stuck there. The crew tried to look for a solution in an aircraft operational manual, but they failed. After that, Hansen decided to establish a conference call with Northwest Airlines Maintenance in Minneapolis, but the employees there were also unable to find a solution to the sudden bank, as nobody previously dealt with such an issue and nobody was trained for it. To have better control over the aircraft, the pilots descend to 28,000 feet and begin to fight to regain control using the ailerons and asymmetric engine thrust, applying more engine power to one side than the other. After regaining control with the air traffic controllers in Anchorage, the crew tries to configure the aircraft for landing to see how it would behave. Airspace around Anchorage is very busy due to multiple cargo flights between America and Asia stopping here for refueling. If the pilots had lost control over the jumbo jet, it could have collided with another plane. As the plane was flying slower, the control was harder. The first officer had to apply even more thrust to engines number one and two while reducing it in the two others. In the meantime, the captain asked the flight attendants to prepare the cabin for landing. The crew showed the passengers the brace position and checked that all items and passengers were secured in the cabin as they were preparing for the worst. After all, the plane could crash just seconds before touching the ground due to, for example, strong wind gust. The landing was also very risky as the rudder was connected to the nose wheel in the 747. This could cause the pilots to lose control of the plane after touchdown, but still at a dangerously high speed. At half past 7 p.m., the jumbo jet touched down hard at the Ted Stevens International Airport in Anchorage. The flight crew used the right brakes and the three available thrust reversers to bring the aircraft to a stop. No one was hurt or injured. The passengers disembarked as usual, using the stairs as there was no need for evacuation. 
Shortly after the investigation started, the NTSB and Boeing experts checked the aircraft thoroughly and recreated every minute of the flight. Finding a reason was much faster as the aircraft was intact and the flight crew was alive after the accident, which is not that frequent after such a serious failure in flight. The final NTSB report states that the cause of the incident was a fatigue fracture of the lower rudder power control module manifold, which resulted in a lower rudder hardover. This means the aircraft rudder deflected to its travel limit on itself without crew input. The 747 gave a full left lower rudder, requiring the pilots to use a full right upper rudder and right aileron to maintain attitude and course. The incident resulted in an airworthiness directive released by the FAA. This failure was deemed unusual and nobody has ever experienced it before. All four pilots were awarded the Superior Airmanship Award in January 2004 by the Airline Pilots Association. The senior captain Hansen said that crew resource management contributed to the flight's safe landing at Anchorage as four pilots were working together in the cockpit. The incident did not initially receive much media attention, as social media wasn't available back then. Now as promised, let's talk about the aircraft involved in this accident. The Boeing 747-400, with the registration November 661, Uniform Sierra, was built by Boeing in 1988 as a prototype Boeing of the at-the-time new 747-400 series. It was used during the version's test flights. It was delivered to Northwest Airlines, which was the launch customer for the 747-400 on December 8, 1989. After the merger with Delta Airlines, the airline from Atlanta took over this jumbo jet, which after a further seven years in service with Delta, was retired. This aircraft was later sent to the Delta Flight Museum for preservation in 2016, and you can now enter this 747-400 via stairs or an elevator and proceed through the intact first-class cabin and then through the economy section. This aircraft is so famous that it even has its own detailed Wikipedia page. As you see, undetected fatigue fractures can cause serious consequences and even lead to a deadly crash, which has been the case many times in aviation history. As a result of this accident, the FAA and Airworthiness Directive that made ultrasonic inspections mandatory on Boeing 747-400. This allowed for a non-destructive detection of potential fatigue fractures. The aircraft involved in the accident was not damaged and it was returned to service with Northwest Airlines. Only hard work and cooperation between the pilots allowed this flight to land safely and save over 400 lives. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to this channel and consider purchasing a channel membership as a new exclusive video will be soon available for members.